Uh, I was uh, sh uh, photographing for the National Post on the Saturday, the 26th of June. Uh, I'm a freelance photographer, and um, I was sent down to take pictures of the protests during the G20. And um, so I followed the, um, the march, the Union Labor March down Queen Street. Then about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I got a call from the, the photo desk saying that some protesters were heading north on Bay Street and some windows were being smashed. So I, I ran in that direction and I met up with the protesters and the police at the corner of uh, University and College Avenue. And then from there on, it was sort of a standoff between the police and the protesters over about three hours until my arrest. And basically, I just photographed the standoff as the police pushed the protesters north on um, University Avenue towards Queens Park. Um, essentially, what would happen was the police would surround the um, protesters, and then they would they would pull certain protesters out of the group and, and arrest them. And I just photographed this throughout the afternoon for about three hours. Eventually, we got to Queens Park, and we everyone was pushed up onto the lawn of Queens Park. And I probably shot about a dozen or so arrests at least. And at one point, um, about four officers ran out and threw me to the ground and arrested me. And I told them I was with the media. I was a National Post photographer. They told me that they didn't care. And uh, I was arrested. And roughed up pretty good and hit over the head, kneed in the back and elbowed, and then dragged behind the, uh, the police line. No, there was no, there was no warning whatsoever. I'd never heard them once say that any of the journalists, the media, or the protesters had to disperse from the area. And I believe that Queens Park was actually set aside as a as a protest zone. So, I was, I mean, I was shocked as to have my credentials on and and with all of my photo gear to, when I was being taken down. It it took me by surprise. And I, I mean, I'm, I've I've covered you know tense situations before in Haiti. And I've worked in Uganda, and and I, I, I photographed quietly and very unobtrusively, and I never once sort of got in the way of the police doing their job. I photographed from a distance, and so I was quite surprised to be to be arrested. I was taken to a uh, to a paddy wagon, where I was photographed in front of the paddy wagon, and I was told that I was being charged with obstruction and unlawful assembly, and then I was put in the back of the paddy wagon for a, a couple of hours as. The paddy wagon got filled up with other protesters, and there was two parts to the paddy wagon. And then I heard in the other section that my colleague Brett uh, Gunlock was in the other section. He was arrested under similar circumstances. He's a press photographer as well. Uh, and then eventually we were transferred from that small paddy wagon to a larger one. When that wagon was filled with protesters, we were driven to the uh, detention center and unloaded and put in uh, metal cages. And then we were in the detention center for the whole night and basically transferred from cage to cage and processed throughout the night, um, fingerprinted, strip searched, um, sort of read our rights. We got to talk to a lawyer at one point, I think maybe five in the morning. And, uh, and then at about 10 in the morning, I was transferred to the courthouse in North Toronto and eventually went before a judge at about 4.30 in the afternoon and I was released. I currently do not have charges uh, laid against me. The charges were dropped at the end of August. I mean, I, it was, I, I think that they were working under different, difficult circumstances. I, I would not have wanted to have their job, but I, I think that they overstepped the boundaries in terms of the way they dealt with the media and, then, and frankly, in terms of the way they dealt with protesters. I mean, if I'm being arrested as a, a legitimate press photographer, there, I witnessed a lot of peaceful protesters being rounded up and arrested, and I think they pushed the, uh, ball too far in the other direction. Frankly, it was humiliating. I mean, you're, you're put in, um, in, the, you're in these metal cages, and um, it was pretty cold, and you're, um, we weren't fed very much. Uh, we had one cheese sandwich and uh, one, two glasses of water. And you just sort of felt like you're in a factory doing process. So we were, we were moved throughout the night to different um, rooms where we were strip searched, and uh, another room where we were uh, asked questions and I just said I didn't want to talk about it, I wanted to speak with my lawyer. Um, and then basically we were just held in these different cages and with other protesters just waiting to be eventually released. When I was arrested, they, my, my equipment and my backpack was taken from me and I had two camera bodies and two lenses plus my, uh, all the images I had shot for the last two hours. 
uh, and they were not given back to me when I was eventually released. So the, the police are still in custody of, of the equipment, but more importantly, the, the images of you know, what I documented that day. Have, have, they have not been returned to me, and they have, um, the police have denied uh, being in possession of those, those items. So uh, following my arrest, in order to keep working as a freelancer, I had to go out and purchase brand new equipment, which was uh, close to $10,000 uh, replacement value.